Right then, this month's vlog is a little bit different to normal because instead of me having a session on a venue or seeing me chasing a particular fish, what I've got for you is a compilation of footage that was put together during the latter part of spring and the early part of summer whilst I've been fishing a really interesting water in Yorkshire. And the reason this venue is interesting is not because it contains some monster fish, it's but because these fish are all related to the legendary Redmere Pool. There were only five or six original carp in the pit and they were stocked some 30 odd years ago by the late Mike Palmer who acquired them from former Redmere Syndicate member Kevin Clifford when they were only a pound or so in weight. Not of a massive size and the local folklore says that some anglers have stacked up 200 nights without a fish so I know it's not going to be easy. The footage starts in May and runs through to the end of July. It covers some really enjoyable fishing when a target is just to catch one of these very special northern legends. Well, sometimes I just don't want to go fishing and today's been one of those days when I've had loads to do and as I've slowly got my way through the jobs that needed doing today, I sort of sat down this afternoon and went, oh, I really don't fancy going fishing, but there was a little voice in the back of my head saying, go on, get yourself down there, you never know, the, the biggins are all due out. But at the back end of April, it's that time of the year when the big fish do feed and at the moment, as far as I'm aware, there's been nothing out of this lake. So, you know, there is a chance and now I'm here and I'm all set up Although it's cold and it's bleak, I actually do feel pretty glad that I'm down here. So, fingers crossed, it'll pay off. And in the morning, before I pull off and go to work, I'll have a nice big fat old mirror carp sat in the landing net waiting to be weighed. But uh, either way, it's good to be here. And that is what carp fishing is like sometimes. You just don't want to get down to the lake, but you've got to motivate yourself to do it because, you know, you're not going to catch them whilst you're sat at home. And, you know, I've only got a good chance whilst I'm here. So, that's what I'm doing. Putting the rods in motion. So, Let's hope it pays off. Well, there's my first one, and that is a, a beauty, it really is. Got to be mid 20, something like that. Really happy, very happy indeed. There we go, that's a, an absolutely gorgeous fish to have just after your tea and after a day's work. For this area of Yorkshire as well. There ain't many lakes with dark scaly mirrors in. So that's lovely. Yeah, wounded. That's uh, how I'm feeling at the moment. As you can see there, I've uh, I've been cut off, and it's only sort of seven, I think it's seven nights I've done so far. I had the scar quite quickly, and it's only two days ago since um, since I had the scar, and then uh, got the fish out of the reeds, got it out into open water, could see exactly which fish it was, saw it come up to the surface a few times, big scales gleaming in the morning sun. Started giggling to myself, oh, here, we do. here we go, for a drop, drop lucky. Only so few nights into the campaign and uh, one last surge into the reeds, just to the left. And it literally just touched the reeds. It's probably one second, not even that long into the reeds and the tip sprung back. And as you can see there, it's a really clean cut on the hook link. So wounded. Not feeling good, but that is part of carp fishing. One of 
things I've noticed on here over the last few weeks is the amount of fizzing up off the bottom that's happening. There's loads of it. You know, but deciding whether that is tent or carp out there is very, very difficult to, to do. It doesn't matter how experienced you are. But one of the things I do know about low stock waters is that if you make too much disturbance and start recasting all the time and rebaiting over the top of fishes, you're just going to move them out of the area. So it's hard sitting here looking at this fizzing and thinking, cool, I should be recasting to it, but I've adopted the sit and wait approach for this water, which I think is the right thing to do because the carp in here have been around an awful long time. They've seen what rigs and bait are about and they've been hooked a few times as well. So, you know, I'm basically just sort of sitting and waiting for them to move into an area and then hopefully have a little bit of confidence. At the moment, the rods have been out for about 12 hours or so. They've got the same baits on as when I arrived. I've not re rebaited, I've not disturbed the swim. So, you know, it is, it is hard to do, but um, it definitely pays off in the end. And I think for this water, it's the right approach as well, because these carp are experienced. They know exactly what anglers are all about. So, you know, if I make too much disturbance, it's probably just gonna wreck my chances. We're approaching the end of May now and it's been pretty tough sort of turning up here and doing the overnight is because I've been pretty consistent over the last couple of weeks. I've not been here every night but I've been here quite a few nights just fishing from about five o'clock in the evening through to half seven and then going to work and trying to fit my running in and stuff and then getting back here so um, you know it plays on your mind a little bit when there's only five carp in the water because you sit there and go on Instagram or Facebook and whatever and see all these big fish that everybody's holding and you're sitting there you know blanking your your whatever's off but um, you know that is target fishing if you've got a, a target in mind you've got to be pretty consistent you've got to be pretty relentless with your trips and and have one focus rather than get distracted by what other people are doing and what other fish are getting caught so I've given it a good go and I've got about a week left until I've got a ticket starting in Lincoln which I really want to have a go at so I'm probably going to fish here through till the end of May and then turn to the water in Lincoln for a couple of weeks because around about the middle of June, that's when I actually finish work at Carp Tour, that's when the final issue comes to, um, to, to print. So from then onwards, I'm more than likely gonna start doing an awful lot more fishing because over the years, I've never done much session fishing, certainly not many uh, 48 hours or, or 72 hour trips. And that's what I'm gonna start doing on some of the waters that I've got tickets for. So with regards to this venue, I'm more than likely going to call it a day from the end of May and then come back here in the, the autumn time because it has, as I say, been been pretty quiet. And I do think with this type of venue, when it's really low stocked, you've got a few opportunities in the early part of spring when the fish are starting to wake up. And that's really sort of past now because we're, we're now, as I say, approaching the end of May. And the only action that I'm getting is from the tench. And, you know, when the tench start moving in on you, because there's quite a few in here then, you know, it does start getting to the stage where you think, right, it, the best approach here now is to sort of call it a day, go and have a little bit of time on another water, try and catch a few fish from there, and then, then come back here at another time. Because I do want to catch this fish. It is a lovely old fish, so um, I'd love to be able to hold him up to the cameras for you, for you to see. But um, as I say, it's probably going to be about another week, and then we'll get back on here in the autumn and see where we go from there. But it's been really fun so far anyway. That really is a nice sight to wake up to. It's pretty damp at the moment and it's early July so although I said on previous videos I wouldn't be coming down here again until the autumn I'm, uh, I'm back down here because it's definitely got onto my skin it's all I've been able to think about fishing wise over the last few weeks and I've not been down here for three weeks so the lake has changed a little bit you know early season there was quite a few sightings of fish at the opposite end of the lake in the reeds but the three days that I've been coming and going to the lake this week I've seen him virtually every day in the snag to the left there and uh, I've been able to get some good sightings of the fish as well I've managed to count five different ones I think there's six in here but uh, I've count, counted five and I think I've seen the big black common that everybody talks about and he's not too uh, not too far uh, away from the, the size of the big scaly so you know, he's, he's definitely a decent target fish to get. But I don't really know what it is about the lake that uh, that keeps drawing me back, other than the, the history of the fish. It's not necessarily the size, they're not big, they're not monster fish, you know, you're not, I'm not looking at catching fish that are sort of mid thirties or, or above. You know, I don't know where we're talking about with that big scaly and, um, and the common, perhaps low thirties, perhaps upper twenties, I don't know, but they're both lovely, lovely fish that I'd love to catch. 
I get a lot of lads asking me about why I always fish me rod tips in the air and the answer to that is I don't always fish like that but when I do there's a reason for it and as you'll see today there's an awful lot of obstructions about so I've got my tips up nice and high to keep the line out of harm's way because there's a lot of weed on the bottom there's a lot of reeds in the area and also the snags now it's quite a confined area where I'm fishing to so once the fish gets any momentum there's a chance it's going to get into the back of the snags and I've got no chance of then getting it out so I've got all the rods locked into place I've got no bait runners on these reels but I've got the clutches all nicely tight and as you'll see at the back there I've got some tent pegs in place to just lock the rods down so what I'm fishing for is just a, a couple of bleeps and then I'm on the rods as fast as I can possibly get to them I've got no bivy door zipped down I've got no sleeping bag zipped up because it is a, a case of just hit and hold I fished in areas like this on Rainbow Lake and if you can get them out of areas on Rainbow Lake then you can definitely get them out of areas like this. It's all about confidence more than anything and I'm very confident in this area once I get something hooked there's a good chance that I'm going to get it in. Well I've only got two rods out at the moment because the third one has at last produced me another fish from this lake. Really really chuffed to get this one as well because uh, it's been hard going over the last few weeks. But yep, yeah, I uh, got here probably about six o'clock yesterday evening, got two rods out into this bay here and was wondering what to do with my third rod. Now, I needed to tie a new rig up for that rod, so I went into the bivvy, started tying it up and heard a fish crash. And I came out of the bivvy and there was a massive set of rings coming from tight to that margin over there. And with there being nobody else here other than myself, I thought, what the heck, I'll chance a cast and launched it right over there and it landed absolutely bang on where the fish was showing. And I went to bed last night thinking that has got to go, it really has. And at first light this morning, that rod tightened up and I struck into a fish and yep, jobs are good and proper chuffed. My second fish from the lake. Well, the blank run has finally come to an end and I've managed to get another one of the absolute gems from this lake. It looks absolutely ancient, it really does. But either way, I'm absolutely buzzing, I really am. I don't know what it weighs, I don't really care. It's just nice to get another one out of this lake. They're all very, very special. We're in the second week of July now, and the fishing on here over the last few weeks has been really tough. I'm just about to go on my summer holidays for a couple of weeks and when I return there's lots of different things happening in my life. I'm about to start a new job, I'm about to move house, so unfortunately the fishing on this lake is going to have to take a bit of a back seat. But if ever there's an example of a venue where it's not just about size, then this is it. Because there's not many carp in the north that are related to Redmere. The two fish that I've managed to land from here over the last few weeks, they're definitely amongst some of the most special ones that I've got on the album. <laughs> 